My patients ask me some pretty interesting questions, hard questions, but you really challenge me in the comments and sometimes ask really weird ones as well. So I'm about to answer some of your comments. Huge thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this episode. Let's get started. Pee whoop. Beep beep, I'm a sheep. I like that name. Beep beep, I'm a sheep. I want a dog so badly, but I'm allergic. Is there anything I can do to get rid of that? or any other allergy. There are some treatments that exist where you can actually slowly work your way out of an allergy. And there are shots, there are tablets, sublingual tablets that you can do. I'm not an expert in it, but I know it does exist. It's like a form of immunotherapy. I drew YouTube. Where does a memory go when it's forgotten? Left pinky toe. And if you want to get it back, you have to only think about the left pinky. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. The, where does the memory go? It just, the, the, the connections aren't there to remember it. But I will say the best way to remember something that you've forgotten is to not think about it. Because <laughs> forcing yourself to think about it sometimes is the worst thing you can do. That's why taking time off sometimes yields the best boost to productivity and creativity. And by the way, this is the one thing that in terms of like harmful effects of TikTok that people talk about. Before we used to have a lot of free time. So we're waiting for the bus, we'd sit with our thoughts and we'd be introspective. We would think about stuff. We'd remember memories, but now <laughs> we're never alone. We're always looking at something. We're always being controlled by whatever it is we're watching. So we don't have that free time anymore. And I worry about that. If someone has a fever that we're trying to cool down and you only have one ice pack, where is the best place to put it? I probably wouldn't want to cool someone's fever with an ice pack. I can't even imagine. Okay, I'm gonna remove the term fever. If I'm just trying to cool someone down because they're having acute hyperthermia or something, I would put it under the armpit. The most surface area that you're gonna get contact with the skin, and it's the most surface area with an important blood vessel, the brachial artery. It's right there. So you're getting a lot of blood circulation moving past that area. I guess you could also do it in your groin as well, but like, same principle. Why do we have boogers? Uh, boogers are mucus. Mucus traps unwanted substances. It acts as a barrier. It's really good. We like mucus. Unless we have too much and then it becomes a problem. So that's when we try and clean it out by using nasal saline sprays. Why don't little kids get sore from physical activities? Even teenagers get more sore than little kids. The beauty of being young. Everything is so ready to heal, so much circulation. Also, it's smaller, so less distance for nutrients and blood flow to travel. But the, the regenerative capacity of not just a young child, but like a baby is incredible. When babies are sick, the time for them to recover sometimes is like this, meaning like, on day four, sometimes they'll look very sick. And then day five, they'll look like nothing ever happened to them. It's, it's incredible. If a woman gets into an accident or falls really hard, could her eggs break? Like if you drop the chicken's egg on the floor. No, these are not the same types of eggs. Humans have different eggs. They're called eggs because they're part of the reproduction cycle. Very different eggs. No shell on the human egg. I don't have a 4.0 grade point average. Can I still be a doctor? Yes. In fact, getting perfect grades doesn't correlate with a better physician. I will say, there are doctors who just get by and finish last in their class, and those doctors are also called doctors. I have a sore inside my mouth and it's taking forever to heal. I can't exactly put a Band-Aid on the inside of my cheek, so would you recommend anything to help it heal faster? Look, in general, to help sores heal faster, you wanna prevent the irritation. And irritation can be both chemical and physical. It could be other things, but those are the two main ones that I see happen in my practice. Physical meaning, you know, you're chewing on your cheek or you keep biting the same spot of your cheek or your braces are rubbing on your cheek. Chemical could be like you ate something very spicy or you burned your mouth. Uh, that's like more of a thermal one than chemical, but let's say it was a burn and then you were eating spicy foods and citrusy foods that can create longer lasting inflammation irritation. But then if you have a wound or sore that's not healing, on the face or mouth, it absolutely needs to be examined because there are cancers of the mouth, there are cancers of the face that happen when you have a non-healing wound. In fact, on the sun exposed areas of the face, if you have a non-healing wound, it's almost to the level of skin cancer until proven otherwise. And mucous membranes, by the way, are some of the fastest healing parts of our bodies. There's so much circulation there that it actually heals up quite fast. What's actually happening when your foot falls asleep? 
Either you have suppressed the nerve's ability to fire, so it feels really numb. You cut off circulation to the limb by putting pressure uh, on a blood vessel. Because remember, if you put enough pressure on a blood vessel, you can choke it so that the part further away from where you're choking stops getting circulation. And if it stops getting circulation for a long period of time, those muscles are like, yeah, we ain't working. Those nerves are like, we ain't working. We're taking a break until you fill us up. And that's when you fill the pins and needles and all that good stuff. That mechanism is actually a good mechanism because it's in place to warn you that, hey, you're choking off your foot. You should, you should change position and get up off the toilet because not only are you choking off the foot, you're probably raising your risk of getting a hemorrhoid, which is why I tell people not to TikTok on the toilet. Back to the questions in just a second, but first I wanna to talk to you about Grammarly, the AI writing partner that helps professionals write better and faster. Sometimes I make YouTube videos like these where I see your questions for the very first time and answer right off the cuff, just like I do with my patients. Other times though, I like to write out my videos. Like in this animated project where I told stories of mysterious deaths that doctors still can't explain. Spooky. Writing a video like that not only took a lot of research, but a ton of creative effort to get the words on the page in a way you can truly enjoy and understand. Fortunately, my writing process has been made so much more efficient thanks to Grammarly. But it's not a tool to help me write more. It helps me write faster. And not just on big creative projects either. I can use Grammarly to help me craft emails between my hospital or messages to my animating team. Its AI features help my writing feel more compelling, either by improving my word choice or actually trimming out the fluff, which I have a bad habit of doing too often like right now. I also really appreciate that Grammarly does not share any of my data with other AI language training models, meaning I can trust that all my writing and info is private. I'm always in control of my own data. Not only do 96% of users say Grammarly helps craft more impactful writing, but also you could sign up right now and download for free using my link in the description so you too can get started with Grammarly to make your writing better, faster. Is it a big deal if I pee in the shower? It all goes to the same place down the drain anyway, doesn't it? There are some positives and pros to peeing in the shower. It saves time, it saves water, but health risks, there are some unique situations here. Urine is not fully free of bacteria. A lot of people think it's fully sterile. It's not really sterile. Remember, it also has to travel through your urinary tract, which it could pick up some pathogens across the way. When it exits your body, it could pick up some pathogens. So there are some potential sources of bacteria. That being said, there's bacteria all around us, inside of us, that's not the end of the world. But if you have a urinary tract infection and you pee and you step in it and you have a cut, could you get an infection? Yes, pretty low risk. There are also instances of issues of almost conditioning yourself to pee every time you hear running water, like when you're in the shower. So the next time you hear that, you're gonna wanna pee and it's gonna be uncomfortable. There's also instances of like people saying, oh, I should just pee just in case, especially in females where they say, I wanna pee just in case before I leave and maybe we should pee in between classes so that I never have to go to the bathroom. If you do that too often, you can get into the situation where you train your bladder to send signals for you to wanna pee very early, you could also cause some pelvic floor dysfunction. If you're doing it every now and then and you don't make it a, a routine thing, I think the risk is pretty low. Pee away, I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird question. Dr. Mike, do you agree with me that your celebrity doppelganger is Zachary Levy? I don't know who that is. Levi, Levi. who's that? An actor. Do you think that is? I always thought it was Keanu Reeves. Matrix? Would it be healthier to go barefoot all the time like cavemen? No. <laughs> when you go barefoot all the time, you open up yourself to cuts, scrapes, infections, bone bruises, like there's all sorts of issues that happen from that. So no, protect your foots. Do I need to wash my armpits if I always wear deodorant? Absolutely. You wanna wash off the deodorant. And deodorant is just scent and a little bit of alcohol to kill some of that bacteria. So it doesn't actually solve the problem and it could build up in your armpits and then cause blockages and irritations and ingrown hairs and all these problems. So please wash your armpits. In fact, the most important places to wash, groin and armpits and the genitals. I guess that is involved in the groin. If you feel cold coming on, is there actually anything you can proactively do to shorten how long you'll be sick? There's so many cold pills and supplements and hacks and I wonder if anything makes a difference. The hard answer on this is outside of the basics. I'm talking about staying well hydrated, adequate rest, 
eating your fruits and vegetables and proteins, lean proteins. There is no magic supplement thing on, in the pharmacy that's gonna do this for you. I say this as someone who lives that by example. When I'm sick, I desperately want to get better but I don't go to the pharmacy and pick up giant mega doses of vitamin C. I don't go pick up the zinc tablets that promise miracle cures. Like it just, it's not gonna help. If you're not getting adequate rest, maybe you wanna take an over-the-counter medication to lower your fever or your aches and pains, cause that will allow you to rest. Maybe you wanna take a medication over the counter that can make you sleepy so that you get adequate rest. Maybe, maybe, maybe in some cases that works. But in general, I try to follow the mantra of less intervention unless it's absolutely proven to help or I'm willing to trade off the negatives. Or if I'm just giving myself something to ease my physical discomfort, there, I kind of open it up to grandma's cures. Chicken noodle soup, a little cloth pad on the scalp, a little back rub, whatever, whatever you wanna do. You wanna drink ginger tea? If it's not causing you harm and the risk of it not working is still zero, by all means, go. Why is my girlfriend always cold? It seems like girls are always colder than boys. Mm. Hard to make that distinction. Having lower muscle mass, lower body mass in general can, make you more cold. Having anemia can predispose you to being cold, thyroid dysfunction. So there are certain things, but hard to make that generalization stick. What would happen if you never got rid of a splinter? Would it live in your body forever? You could become best friends. No, it can, like your body can create a little capsule around it, almost like an abscess, because the body does a good job at walling off from foreign substances. Ideally, you don't want that to happen because that could become problematic. So you want to get rid of them, see a medical professional. I don't advise people doing it themselves unless it's like fully out there and easy to reach. Even then, if it starts getting red and spreading, the redness starts spreading, you could be at risk for cellulitis. Kayla YouTube, have you ever wanted to quit YouTube? There have been times where I came close to quitting YouTube. One of those times happened to be when the company that helped me start my YouTube channel, they kind of gave me my initial funding and um, some resources to start the channel, actually saw us after one year, and I thought we were doing pretty decently. We picked up 300,000 subscribers. They said, no, Dr. Mike, we view you as a failure. You turned down some of the sponsorships that we wanted you to take some BS vitamin stuff and some clothing brands that I didn't really like. I didn't want to lie to my audience. They were so mad at me that they fired us and they labeled us a failure. And in those moments, you kind of look at it and you say, look, I'm a doctor. I really want to focus on medicine. Is this the right path? And ultimately, I wanted to help as many people as possible using the knowledge that I picked up over the course of my career. And I thought, if I could do this on a scale such as big as YouTube, I would be a better doctor. I thought I'm a family medicine doctor. When our patients were in emergency rooms, we went there. When our patients were in the offices, we went there. They couldn't leave their homes, we'd do a home visit. Now, my patients, not literally my patients, lawyers don't come after me, are on social media. So it's time that we as family medicine doctors take the call to action. And I came back and we proved them wrong and went viral time and time again and now have almost 12 million subscribers thanks to you. Is cracking knuckles problematic? Click here to get that answer. More responding to comments. And as always, stay happy and healthy.